Welcome to our share on Rambam's uh, Hilchot Talmud Torah, which we're just about to start. Um, of course, we dedicate this episode in memory of Levi ben Moshe Esser and Elisheva Yael ben Lea ben Levi. <coughs> and we also dedicate it in memory of um, Rabbi Omori, Rabbi Roni Salach ben Avram Ezra. And I'm going to hand you over to Michael. Thank you, Rabbi Shiach. So this... Um, <laughs> This uh, a new series we're going to do is uh, Hilcha Talmud Torah, the laws of the study of Torah. Um, it is the third section in Sefer Hamada, the Book of Knowledge. Uh, we've done Hilcha Yisraeli Torah, we've done Hilcha Deus. Now we're doing Hilcha Talmud Torah. It is the third the third um, section in this book. So let's delve straight in. Uh, oh, the, by the way, this. Uh, the two positive commandments that are dis- being described here are number one, to study Torah, and number two, to honor those who study it and know it. So let's start. Perek Rishon, Halacha 1. Nashim va'avadim uktanim paturim Talmud Torah. Women, slaves, and minors are free from the obligation of Torah study. Aval katan. Aviv Chayav Lelamdo Torah. Um, nevertheless, a father is obligated to teach his son Torah, Shinema, as it is stated, Velimadetem Osom et Benechem Ledabebom, from Devarim 11 19, and you shall teach them to your sons to speak about them. Famous quote uh, from the Shema. The Einisha Chayevet Lelamed et Bena. A woman is not obliged to teach her son. Shekol hachayev lilmod, chayev lelamed. For only those who are obligated to learn are obligated to teach. So only the males in the households uh, have the obligation. Halacha 2. Keshem shechayev adam lelamed et beno, kachu chayev lelamed et ben beno. Just as a person does, is obligated to teach his son, so too... Is he obligated to teach his grandson? As it is uh, stated in Devorim 4 9, Vahodatam Levanecha or Livne Vanecha, and you shall teach them to your sons and your grandsons. Velo Vano or Ben Belo Bilvad, Ella Mitzvah al Kol Chacham Vachacham Yisrael Lamed et Hatal Medim. <clears throat> Furthermore, this charge, this commitment, is not confined to one's children and grandchildren alone. Rather, it is a mitzvah for each and every wise man to teach all students. Afal enam banav, even though they are not his children, as it is stated again in Devarim 6 7, Vishinanton Levanecha, etc. And you shall teach. Um, uh, and you shall teach them to your sons. lamdu banecha elu talmidecha. The oral tradition explains your sons that these are your students. Shetalmidim kuruin banim, because uh, students are also called sons, as it is stated in uh, Malachim two three. Vayetzu vnei hanuviim, and the sons of the prophets went. Fourth. Now, just um, just to um, expand on that, this is relates how Elisha called his teacher Elijah father, father, and also uh, Sanhedrin sixty eight a relates that Rabbi Akiva used the same expression to refer to his teacher Rabbi Eliezer ben Hokanas. Uh, the Rambam's words are quoted from the Sifri. Similarly, Sanhedrin nineteen b relates. Whoever teaches his colleague's son Torah is considered as if he sired him. And also, if we hark back to our last series, note that in uh, the Hilchot Yusodei HaTorah um, uh, 7.5, where Rambam defines more precisely the understanding of the term the sons of the prophets. This is that, um, that particular episode, Perek 7, uh, Halacha 5, where he talks about these schools, these academies that were created, and if you manage to, uh, to to build yourself up to being a potential prophet, and these were called Vnei Nevi'im, the sons of the prophets. Um, <coughs> and Rambam continues, Im came, lama nitztava al 
the Al Ben Bano. If so, why do the commandments explicitly mention one son and grandson? Lahakdim Bano Leven Bano. This is to grant precedence to one's son over one's grandson. So the son is the first in the pecking order of teaching, so to speak. Uh, Mamam continues, Oven Veno Leven Chavero. And also one's, uh, also sets a precedence for one's grandson over the son of a colleague. Halacha 3. Machayov Liska Malamed Livno Lalamdo. Also, one is obligated to hire a teacher for one's son. Whilst it is not required to undertake any expense to teach a uh, colleague's son. Excuse me. A uh, person who was not instructed by his father is obligated to arrange for his own instruction um, uh, when he can understand. Shnema, as it is stated in Devorim 5.1, uh, And you shall study them and take heed to perform them. Similarly, in every place one finds that study takes precedence over deed. Uh, for study brings around deed. However, deed does not bring about study. So this is very interesting. What what? What, uh, what, what, what provokes the other? Does deed provoke you to become more religious and perhaps study more? Or is it the other way around? Let's look at this. Um, Kiddushim 40b relates that Rabbi Tarafon and some elders were dining in the loft of Bet Nitzah in Lot. This question, this question that uh, Rambam poses, or rather poses, he, he, uh, he uh, intimates this question, is study greater or is deed greater? Rabbi Taufan replied, deed is greater. Rabbi Akiva replied, study is greater. All of them concluded, study is greater because study leads to deed. Um, uh, I would like to add something extra and I would say study, um, well, who, who, who knows what is better, deed or is deed? Is it better to, to do or to or to do good deeds or to study that would lead you to good deeds? I think if you study, it must lead to deeds. That's why you're studying. Ultimately, that's the ideal. Yeah, it's, that's um, the ideal. But it we must have to be it, reminded about it. Yeah, it's exactly. Not like, uh, yes. Halacha dalot haya who wrote lilmod Torah. If a person wants to study Torah and he has a son who he should teach Torah, his own study takes priority over that of his son. If his son is wiser and more creative thinker and can understand what he studies more than his father, his son takes priority. Even though his son is granted priority, he should not neglect his own studies. For just as he is commanded to teach his son, he is commanded to teach himself. Halacha Hei 5. A person should always study Torah and afterwards get married. If he marries first, his mind will not be free for study. If, however, if his natural inclination overcomes him to the extent that his mind is not free, he should marry and then study. Uh, I guess this means his natural inclination, perhaps his biological uh, urges. Number Halacha uh, six: Me Mosai Oviv Chayov Lil Lil Lilamdo Torah. At what age 
is a father obligated to teach his son? When a child begins to speak, his father should teach him Torah, Tzivalanu, Moshe, uh, and also Shema Yisrael. So why particularly, let's look, why uh, this particular Torah, Tzivalanu, Moshe, Moshe, Kelach, Yaakov. The Torah, Moses, this is the, in the translation of the Torah, Moses commanded us, is the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. This verse emphasizes the fundamental connection a Jew has to the Torah. As soon as an heir is born, he becomes the legal owner of the inheritance left to him. Therefore, since the Torah is every Jew's inheritance, as soon as the child is born, he acquires his full share of our nation's spiritual heritage. And the reason why he is, the child is taught uh, Shema Yisrael is because this verse emphasizes the fundamental unity between God and creation, teaching us not only that there is only one God, but also that all creation is at one with him. Uh, and Rambam continues, V'yachar kach melamdo ma'at ma'at, pasukim pasukim, at she ben shesh o ven sheva. Afterwards he should teach him selected verses, little by little, verse by verse, until he is six or seven years old. Hakol l'fi brio, depending on his health of the child. Umolicho etzel melamed hatikonot, at which time he should take him, and to a teacher of young children, a professional, or, well, let's see about a professional, or a, or a teacher of young children. Halacha 7. Haya min hag hamdina lekach melamed hatikonot secha noten lo secharo. If it is a local custom for a teacher of young children to take payment, he should be paid. V'chayov lelamdo b'secha, ad sheikwa Torah shebichtav kula. Uh, the father is obligated to pay for his son's instruction until he could read the entire written Torah. In a place where it is customary, customary to receive a wage for teaching the written Torah, one is permitted to do so. So let's look at that and uh, and perhaps see in what circumstances. Uh, Nadorim 37a relates that the wage a teacher receives is not for his actual tutelage, but rather for the effort involved in caring for the children. Alternatively, the money can be taken for teaching the proper cantillation notes. Um, at that time, there were uh, few texts no written, nothing written down, and the students were taught the entire Torah by heart. The difference between the two opinions is that according to the latter, one may also charge adults. Since the Rambam allowed a wage to be charged without qualifying his words, one may assume that his applies even to teaching adults. This decision can also be derived from his commentary to the Mishnah, Nadorim 4.3. Um... And Rambam continues. Aval Torah Shebaal Peh Aso Lelamda Pischa. However, it is forbidden to take wage for the teaching of the oral law. Shneema, as it is written, Re'ei Lamatzti Eschem Chukim, Moshvatim, Kashet Tziva Hashem, etc. As uh, it is uh, implied by Devorim 4 5, Behold, I have taught you laws and statutes as God commanded me. This is Moshe said, just as I, Moshe, learned at no cost, so too have you been taught from me at no cost. Teach the coming generations in a like manner. Teach them at no cost as you have learned from me. This is, these are Moshe's instructions. Um, uh, and Rambam continues. Uh, Nevertheless, if a person cannot find someone to teach him at no cost, uh, oh, he must pay for his studies. If no one, if a person cannot find someone to teach him at no cost, he must pay for his own studies. As is, it is implied from Proverbs 3.23, Emet Kane, by truth. Uh, may he charge to teach others? Talmud Lomar, 
uh, as uh, we have learned, and I quote, the al timka, but do not sell. Ha lamatata sha'aso lo lelamed bischa, af al pi she'elamdu rabo bischa. Thus, it can be derived that it is forbidden to charge to teach Torah, even though one's teacher charged to instruct him. Maybe when it says buy truth, but do not sell, perhaps it means that the obligation should be on the one, uh, the, the father who sends the children to donate, to give money as yeah. a thank you, rather than being charged for it. It should, yeah. onus should be on the father to buy truth. There's rather there's than, the, there's yeah. onus on the father anyway to teach his son. To teach his son, but if he has to give him to a, a someone to teach him, yeah. and the question is, should he receive money? Should he charge money? To to uh, to teach the child, uh, to teach a child, um, you must buy truth. Perhaps this is just this is a side thought. Um, uh, well, there's actually something, uh, some some commentary here. Rambam interprets. We know in Pilkei Avot, chapter four, Mishnah seven, it states, "Do not make it make the Torah an axe to chop with." Uh, so this is a question, you know, you, you, you're you not supposed to like make a living from teaching Torah. Um, uh, Rambam says don't consider it a medium with which to derive a, li- a livelihood. Or, or it's interpreted this Pukei Avot, chapter 4, verse um, Bishna 7, he continues elaborating on how it is both undesirable and forbidden to derive benefit from Torah study or its instruction. And I quote Rambam. Some people thought foolishly that it is obligatory and fitting to support the wise men and students who occupy themselves in Torah study. This is erroneous. No source in the Torah or in the words of the sages can be found to support it. Amongst the sages of the Talmud, one does not find that they ask for money from other people. They did not receive any funding for their precious and glorious yeshivot. Heaven forbid to say that those generations were not generous and did not give charity. Had a poor person stretched out his hand, they would have filled it with golden pearls. But the poor person did not do so. Rather, he was satisfied with what he could earn in his profession, whether it be a little or lot. Hillel the Elder was a wood chopper and would study before Shemaya and Avtalion and lived in extreme poverty. He was so great that his students were compared to Moses and Aaron. There was no doubt that if he had taught the people to give him benefit, they would not have allowed him to continue chopping trees. The sages would not allow themselves themselves to take money from people. They considered taking such funds as a desecration of God's name in public because the people would thus consider Torah as similar to any other profession and come to scorn it. Halacha 8. Kol ish mi Yisrael chayv b'talmud Torah ben oni ben Oshir. Jewish man, uh, every Jewish man is obligated to study Torah, whether he is poor or rich. Ben sholem begufo ben ba'al yusurim, whether he is healthy and a complete body or afflicted by physical difficulties. Ben bacho ben shahaya zaken gadol shetashash kacho, whether he is young or an old man, young or an old man whose strength has Diminished. Afilu haya oni hamitz parines min hatzdaka or machaze et hapasachim. Even if he is a poor man who derives his livelihood from charity and begs from door to door. Vaafilu bal isha uvanim. Even if he is a husband and a father of children. Chayav likboa lo zuman betal mutora beyom ovalaila. Uh, he is. He must establish a fixed time for Torah study during day and at night. Shneema, as it is written, the Hagita bo Yomon Valaila. You shall think about it day and night. This is from uh, Yeshaya one eight. Halacha nine. Gudolei Chachmei Yisrael Hayu Mehen Chotve Eitzim or Mehen Sheyo Ave Mayim. The greater sages of Israel included wood choppers, water drawers, uh, um, and blind men. Um, now, who were these? 
um, the first, a wood chopper, refers to, well, an example is Hillel. Um, he was a wood chopper. Um, and who was the water drawer? Rav Chuna, or Ketuvot 105a, states that Rav Chuna earned his livelihood in that manner. And who were the blind that are given examples here? Rav Yosef and Rav Sheshet, two of the more prominent Amoraim, were afflicted in this manner. This is found in Pesachim 116b. Despite these difficulties, they were occupied with Torah study day and night. Uh, and were included amongst those who transmitted the Torah's teaching from master to student in this chain stretching back to Moshe uh, Rabbeinu. Halacha 10. Ad e Mosai Chayev Lilmod Torah. Until when is a person obligated to study Torah? Ad Yom Moto, until the day he dies. Shneema, as it is stated in Devarim 4 9, Ofen Yusuru Melvavacha, Kol Yume Chayecha, lest you remove it from your heart all the days of your life. Vachol Zman, Shelo Yasok Melimod. When a person is not involved with study, he forgets. Halacha 11. The chayav, the shalesh, or et zman lemidato. One is obligated to divide his study into three. Shlish batorah shebechtav. One third should be devoted to the written law. Or shlish batorah shebaalpeh. One third to the oral law. Or shlish Yovim v'yaskil achrit dava mereshito v'yotzi dava mitva v'idame dava ledva, and one third to understanding and conceptualizing the ultimate derivation of a concept from its roots, inferring one concept from another and comparing concepts, understanding the Torah based on the principle of biblical exegesis. The Yovin B'midos Shatora Nidreshet Bahem, until one appreciates the essence of those principles. Ad Shiyeda Hayach Hu Ika Hamidos, the Heach Yotzi Haasor, the Hamuta, and how the prohibitions and other decisions which are received according to the oral tradition can be derived using them. For Indian Zehu Nikwa Gemara, the latter realm of study is called Gemara. Halacha 12, Kate Sad, how is the above expressed, or the previous mentioned expressed? Haya Baal Umanut, Vahaya Osek, Bamalachato, Shlosh, Vashaot Bayom. A person who is a craftsman may spend three hours each day involved in his work. Ubatora Tesha and devoted to Torah, nine hours. Otan HaTesha, uh, uh, how to study, Kore Beshalosh Mehen Batorah Shebechtav, in those nine hours he should spend three reading the written law, Ush Beshalosh Torah Shebaal Peh, three learning the oral law, or Beshalosh HaCherot Mitbonen Bedaato Lahavin Devar Medvar, and uh, the three meditating with his intellect to derive one concept from another. Or divrei Kabbalah, Bechlal Torah Shebechtav Hen, or Perushan, Bechlal Torah Shebaal Peh. The, wor- the words of the prophetic tradition are considered part of the written law and their explanation part of the oral law. Inyanim Hanikraim Parades, Bechlal Agumara Hen. The matters referred to as parades are considered part of the Gemara. So the question can be asked. Uh, uh, Kiddushin 30a states a person should always divide his years. One third should be devoted to written law, one third to Mishnah, and one third to Talmud. Um, but the Rambam here defines each of the categories mentioned, uh, and he tries to define what it means to d- divide one years. But you might ask a question that on the surface it's impossible to divide one years into three, since no one knows how long he will live. And there the Talmud explained one must divide one's days. Halacha 
12. Oh, excuse me. Um, we continue. Bame Devarim Amurim, Batchilat Talmudo Shel Adam. The above applies in the early stages of a person's study. Aval Kesheyagdil Bechachma. But when a person increases his knowledge, and does not have the need to read the written law, and or occupy himself with the oral law constantly, Yikra, Beitin, Mzumanim, Torah Shemichtav, Vidvrei Hashmua. He should study the written law and the oral law at designated times. Kedesh lo Yishkach, Davar Midvrei Dinei Torah. Thus, he will not forget any aspect of the laws of the Torah. Mayifne, Kol Yamov, Legmara, Bilvad. And he should devote his attention to the Gemara for the, uh, alone for the entire life. Lefi Rochav Sheyesh Belibo. According to his ambition and his ability to concentrate. And the last halacha, halacha 13. Isha shelamda Torah yesh la scha. A woman who studies Torah will receive reward. Aval eno kescha ha ish, mipne shelo nitz taves. However, that reward will not be as great as a man, since he was, she was not commanded in this mitzvah. <coughs> Whoever performs a deed which he is not commanded to do so does not receive as great a reward as one who performs a mitzvah that he is commanded to do. Ella pachot memenu, even though she will receive reward, lo Excuse me. Uh, even though she will receive a reward, the sages commanded um, the sages commanded that the person should not teach his daughter Torah because most women cannot. Uh, concentrate their attention on study. Elahen motziot divrei Torah ledvrei havai lefi anius daatan, and therefore transfer the words of the Torah into idle matters because of their lack of understanding. Um, but don't forget, in these times, uh, uh, women were, uh, men were educated, women were not in any way instructed and sent to school. So there was a different, it was a different culture of education in those days. It may seem a little bit extreme today, but this is 12th century um, halacha. Omru uh, chachamim kol hamalamed et petor Torah. Our sages declared, whoever teaches his, his, Torah, uh, his daughter Torah, ke'ilu lamda tefilot, is like one who teaches her tales and parables. Bamed devarim amurim, batorah shabal peh. This applies to the oral Torah, the oral law. Aval Torah shabichtav, but to the written law, lo yilamed otah lechatchila. One should not teach one's daughter from the beginning. Ve'ilu lamda, if... However, if one teaches her, Eno Kalamdat Filot, it is not considered as if she was taught idle things. So, pretty straightforward halachas. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and that concludes the first perek of Hilchot Talmud Torah. Thank you very much, Michael. That is absolutely essential listening. Um, it's incredible that this, um, uh, such a seminal work from the Rambam is not more uh, publicised, but thanks to Michael, he's bringing it all to everyone on Torah Anytime, and we thank you very much, Michael, and with that, we wish you a wonderful and blessed week.